All right, so happy Saturday, everybody. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about Shinden Furuyu. Um, talk about Yuki Hen no Kamai, and we're actually going to look at another Akata from Shinden Furuyu called Musan, which literally gives them five days just on Musan. Um, but we, we won't spend five days. Um, so, quick going around. Okay, first two schools are the what kind of schools? Two tiger schools. Two big ones, Koto Yu and right? Knocking down the Tiger School and um, Dual Tiger School. Okay? The next two are the two hidden schools, Kagaku Yu and Komogaku. The hidden in the, the, hidden in the Cloud School and the Hidden Door School. All right? The next two after that are the two Shinden schools. So when we're going to talk about this, Shinden Yu and Kuki Shinden Yu. All right? Then there's the last one. Kage Yoshinyu, Ikanyu, and Yokoshinyu. Alright, so those are the nine that you can start again. Just stop putting it out there a lot so you guys are used to hearing it and hearing it. Alright, we've talked about a lot of Kamai. You know, this point in time today we're going to be looking at Iken no Kamai. Think of Iken no Kamai like Ishimonji, but forward leaning. Alright, so really nothing up here changes, it's just the way it shifts. So, Ihen no Kamai. Uh, so, we started the other day, and uh, now you can see right here, it's going to be a white one sheet. We're going to go up here in the Sishimon sheet, and then I'm just going to do what I think is rock back into it. <laughs> and so, that's it. Now, what I'm not doing is I'm not pushing, I'm not doing that. I'm not really putting any pressure on his arm other than the shift back. And this is key, all right? It's, that's harder for him to pick up. It's very easy for him to pick up five seconds, but he automatically tenses. Automatically tenses. Like I always said, the, it's very easy to react when the thing that's attached to you is the thing that's attacking you. But when the thing that's attacking you isn't the thing that's attached to you, it takes a second to actually get it. 
So we're just going to kind of move up inside the Shishi Momoshi here, and we're just going to not really do anything with the arms at all. We're just going to shift our weight forward so we can get it to start. And we'll see the little stuff that we can find. All right, let's just start right here. Okay, so Monte, guys are doing very well. Uh, I'm going to change this, this week. Uh, uh, all side the same. Um, which is a good point. But this is coming in. Think of it as more of a, oh my god, I'm just getting out of the way. So this is actually kind of tight already. So I'm not way out here and then rocking into it, hitting it again. Like, oh shit, this is tight. Yeah? So now this is actually pretty close. So now when I rock back and forth, whoa, it has a major effect because it's already kind of snug on there. Does that make sense? And then two, make sure we're kind of, my wrist is kind of around this elbow. You know? Um, just, just to have, get that joint in there and kind of, you know, just flat arms a little bit better. So, almost, so instead of thinking of a big Ishimonki out here, almost just like, kind of like, oh my god! Jesus, what? You know, line was all script, totally caught me off guard, and then, oh shit. Alright, so almost like, ah! Alright, kind of scared. Alright? Alright, so, uh, Chris. Big guy concept, he's coming out here, I didn't know. Oh my god! Oh, pretty happy right now. Alright, so now I just happen to be folding off on this side. Oh my god. Ah! Then and now I'm just going to go in here. Just start sort of cycling him down this way. Alright, just start to extend that leg. Obviously, we have to move on. So we're going to be facing the recovery. Oh my god. Alright. Switch in the side. Same reaction. We just kind of go into the outside ish more. He's up. Uh, on this one, too. So as I'm moving out of here, my hand's actually pointing behind me. No. Yeah. I'm not pointing in front of him, I'm pointing behind him. And right, just kind of off the back of his shoulder. And that's what I'm doing the deep end. Right? To kind of his back side. Feel the jobs and stuff like that. But my line is not like here. I'm not facing in front of him. I'm kind of out here, so my hand's actually behind him. Higher level belts, if you want to get a card green for us, I'll actually pull this out a little bit and then go back into it. Even more dramatic, isn't it? Yes. So now instead of just adjusting to hit where he wants to land, as he comes up, I'm actually going to pull him out a little bit. So he's already off balance in the issue Then I'm going to bring that back in and it'll actually cycle him up even more. Okay? Trying the, can I draw them out a little bit more with the Tishimomoji and then take them back? Um, there's a, to, to kind of make that a little easier for you. So as this is coming in and I'm opening up, that hand's being inserted right here. You see that right? Kind of parallel with Chris. Do you see all, the, all see that? So as this is coming in, I'm right, right parallel to him. All right, and I'm really kind of throwing that in there with my body turn. As my body rotates and catches that hand, my body is just shifting more to the outside. So he, and so it fits right in there like a glove. And then I can shift in, and then I got it. So there's a little bit more to this than I kind of alluded to for you high belts who are actually giving this a try. If you want to also, if you just say, listen, I don't care, you know, I want to look at that. You can also get this hand into play too. Do it that way if you want to. We're going to get a little pull. So I'm going to give you two ways to kind of get into this. Is one here rotating, capturing, going, edging in there, reading this thing offline with my body movement. Or two, this hand gets up, oh, and then it goes in to the E hand and does it that way too. Either either or is fine. Just when we get to the transition of going back to an Ishimonji into an E hand and how that really kind of screws up people. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So the first one, this is coming in. Yeah. Alright. So slow. As this is coming up, I'm getting myself out of the way. This hand's sitting right in here. Inserting because of my rotation, pulling him back because I'm laterally moving this way. Alright? So I have the rotation. So if we didn't have if I didn't have the lateral, the rotation is doing that. But I'm doing that as I'm also shifting this way to pull the whole thing offline. Okay? 
the other version is kind of same, it's just getting this hand in play. So this at the rotation next, now it's getting this hand. And this is what's pulling him out more. And then as this side comes along, I'm just replacing it and then coming in. Just timing it. Oh, this hand time. Oh, this hand caught it. Yeah, this is a little more, I was a little more later in the game. Right? So instead of being open it out here, I was actually, oh, sh oh, oh. Does that make sense? Okay, give it a shot. Ah, Mr. Whitehead. The guys are doing well. The guys are doing well. Uh, well, I'm sorry. So, now let's talk about this Catan pen. This Catan pen's been here pretty much the whole day. All right, what I want to do is, in this in Catan pen, is also Shuto. All right, we got a multi and Ura Shuto. All right, and a multi and Ura don't mean left to right, but it'll be back and forth between offices there. Are. All right. Um, people, when they see she looks like, oh, it's a karate chop. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> it is not. It, what a shuto does is number one, A, it can really hurt. Um, but it's more of a pushing, cutting motion than it is a chopping motion down from the side. All right. So that's the way I want you to look at today as we deal with this. Is I want you to think of it as more of a pushing, cutting motion than a chopping motion. Now don't get me wrong, whack! I hit him like that, that would, that would suck. But today I want to concentrate on just this, the kind of pushing cutting aspects of this shoot up. We see that kind of blade side that happens. So let's go back to what we've uh, kind of what we had before. This is coming in, I'm going off on the sushi log and rocking. Oh, great. I'm actually going, I have this, I have that shot which I can do, no problem. I can do that with a whole, I can do it with a hopper can, I can do it with that, I can do it with a, I actually, from here, I'm actually going to put this to an emulsion shoot up, and I'm going to cut right across his face. So I have another issue more on the other side. All right. Which normally wouldn't be the way you do it, but it actually really locks this person up nicely. So again, this is coming in. Oh, whoa. From here, I got to hit him. No problem. But I'm actually going to put it. I'm actually going to step through and use this as a cutter to cut through his face. Mm -hmm. Here. So which makes the whole thing actually easier. Uh, a couple of you guys know about my old man theory. This is coming in. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell just happened? This this is in there. That is the abbreviated version of that. It's like, oh. yeah, next thing you know, you're on the ground and you didn't even see a technique really happen. All right. So uh, just so Jackie, just so you can see. So we're going back to this one where, oh my God, Jack. Whoa. Here. And now, this is just going to turn, flip, and I'm not going to do it with just my hand. I'm actually going to push it forward with my body mm -hmm. to get to the emoji on this side. Okay? I think you, a lot of you guys will recognize this. Which is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. All right, go Be nice to each other. No scarfing. So, um, sorry. So, we're talking about this cutting blade here. All right, well that's if it's a knife. What if the whole thing was like a sword? Right, and it actually extended down into here. So as this is coming in, I'm not cutting in like this. All right, and just sitting in here. I'm actually putting my hand, putting around, cutting here. As I step through, then it gets into my forearm. And so now I have a whole like sword arm that I'm using to come through. Do we see that? That has a more damaging effect because it keeps his head in place the whole time. I'm not just hitting, kind of coming up. He's, he could move his head back now. You know, it, it, once, I, once his hand is right, he can move his head back. I don't want that. I want this here, 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 here. That, that head's always got something in its way. So make sure as that cut hits, that actually transitions up into this form. You can continue the head placement. Okay? Okay, you guys are doing very well. So now let's take it into that old man aspect. All right, I know that this is coming in, so I gotta A, get out of the way. So I'm gonna shift my way. Oh my God. All right, like I'm kind of thinking, like I kind of like this again. I'm automatically going into this hand. Uh, it's more I'm automatically going into this hand. You see that? I just didn't make it one, two. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. What do you think? All right, so I'm going to combine it all into one motion. A slight shift to get out of the way, the arms coming up and then here. Just walk through it. 
You guys know and experience the weight shifting and the transfer of balance and how this steps in. Just, just condense that and use just the feeling that you've gotten. Take the technical out of it and just go, go through it. Okay? Let's go. On the, the transition of this katan, Ken, is because I see some people doing different things. This is coming in, you're, you're trying to scoop and boom this. Like, right? If Chris wanted to, he could absolutely 110% resist me on this. There's no doubt. He just he's hungers down, brings that chin down. Yeah, I'm in a fight, I'm in trouble. Okay? If I just kind of hit him like this, all right, his, his gonna flip right out. Where is this go? He's gonna have to get in trouble. Right, there goes my arm. I'm in a situation, I got a ton of man coming right down on me. Really quick. And this is all tense, this is all like. So I want this head going back, whoosh, and that unleashes all of this tension that I have coming after me. Arm point, whoosh, right here. Now, Chris, who's this? Little different, little different. So I'm being very picky. This hand is going up, cutting through him with my white shirt, to come down through. All right, I'm not trying to pick him up. I'm not, I no fucking way, I like going, <laughs> yeah, I know. It never happened. I never. Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> There's a reason I want that hand in that direction, going this way, this back and to the left, because all that strength and power that's right here, once it's oh, it's gone, oh. and it's still in my hand, it's still there. Okay? I'm being very picky about this because this will be the difference between you getting out of this little skirmish and you getting your ass kicked. <laughs> okay? So, let's go. Alright, so let's use the same premise. So now I'm going to switch it over. I'm going to switch the position a little bit so now we have a push cut. And so actually, can you guys come in this one real quick? So I was mentioning this to a couple people, so I might as well put it on tape. So another reason is that I want this to already back down too. I see I'm right there. If I'm doing a push cut with this blade, to the side of Adam's throat. My blade will be traveling on the same line that the cut is happening. Do you see that? Right? Same line that the cut is happening. I would not be doing a push cut on this line with my blade like this. Would I? I just hopefully I get it. But man, if I don't get it, I got nothing to back me up. We understand that. If I want Adam's head, Go this way, that means my arm needs to be aligned that way, not this way. I miss all that was there. That's it. Please understand that. That's what I'm saying. This is like a sword. This is like a sharp edge, cutting cost. Okay, so now I'm going to flip the shoe top. Either come here, we're going to go. Whoa! Oh, I'm going to get more. So now I'm it on the inside. All right, I'm going to do this E hen, but now my shoe toe is going to be a more of an urge to this way, cutting across the side of it. I am, I am not just doing blunt force trauma into his head, where he kind of looks like that. I'm actually I'm cutting through here to get the effect. I'm not trying to whack, not into his jaw. I'd be too hard. You know, jaw against hand, I mean, uh, keep going against hand. I don't know if that would be the greatest fight. So I'm trying to cut through that cheekbone. Whoa. And then I'm actually having my hands to do it. I can actually break that. All right, don't worry about the arm. It's just, it's just fun. So we get, ah. Uh, okay. All right, so we got an ishimonji. Uh, and he hen with an ur cutting across as I kick off this wound. this over here. the fuck? And then, nice after that. Okay? Alright, go ahead. Ah, uh, switch partners, switch partners. Someone different than the size of the person you've been folks. working with. You guys are going to do a point. Uh, okay, first. So, we've all realized that there's this Katan Ken that's happening to their face. Does anyone feel this? This is actually the second. This one's actually doing a Katan Ken too. You could look at it, it's just not reaching. So, as Kyle comes in, ooh, I'm here. We all see that this one is cutting this one. Right? Well, this one could also be seen as a time cutting this way. 
But since this one got here first, he's not in position, so this one's still going. And that's not that long. So if this hand, if this cut path is going this way, shoot, this cut path is going this way. They're crossing, basically, or intend to cross right around where his head is. But this one just happens to get here first. And that's like the law, because the paths are intersecting, and so I can get into here and have this law. If this hand was going this way, not, not even close, is it? Not even close. So, we're going to take that cost. We're actually going to switch it. And we're going to have this be the predominant katana. Whoa. Yeah. I'm actually going to turn. <laughs> so it's like you're shooting an arrow along the line. This is when I ever tell somebody about punch. When you want a muchador, punch them in the face. This is what I'm talking about. All right, so now we're getting here. Whoa, that could be this time fun. Alright. But the forward progression is going to be from here, cutting across the front of his mustache. I think that I'm fine. Okay. This is harder. This is more difficult. Alright. Yes. Can you bring him down there without rotating at all? Oh yeah, oh, yeah sure. okay. Okay. I'm gonna do the cut. I'm going to, well, I'm going to rotate as in have the side come forward to me. No, I mean, once you're pushing your yeah, hand. So yeah, so yes, I'm actually going to, I'm going to push this hand in. Here, and then step forward. And I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do a lot of the Really overemphasize. Yeah, really overemphasize this cut intentionally this long. Because that would be the shoulder. Notice I'm not trying to get him, I'm trying to get in front of him. That cutting motion. Yeah, All right. Try it if you want. If you want, the other thing to look at too is as you get to here, have this guy hit and have this one be more of a time for yourself. So you have that All right, triangle that you can hit. And, oh man, this is really nice and tight. It's a great one to get into. Okay, now we'll throw the old man in a second. All right, grab it. Yeah. So now, uh, let's, let's old man this. So, uh, oh, okay. Ah, oh, actually, shit, we're trying to do this over. <laughs> Same purpose, I just shorten it all up. have to go through as much. I just rotated a little bit more. I inserted this a little bit, a little bit more aggressively, not really that hard. But Matt's coming in, starting my shift now already, over here. Bashing his head up right into this. This is a little trickier. I want to take this, I'm going to ask for So I'm going to move off, I'm going to rotate, move off the inside, hit this hand into this one. So I'm already there in the first move. I already ha I'm having that tie go on. I'm not going here and reinserting it. I'm okay, screw that. <laughs> See it? Yep. A little more difficult, but just say I'm basically taking out all that back and forth and just going to do you look at it again, do you hand or just issue more to go And having that come out of your tool. Go slow. It's actually for the lawnmower short from here. Mate, mate, mate. Questions? Okay, yes, I should do very, very well. I mean, that, some of that stuff is that it's almost advanced wedging kind of hitting the seat pen, which is this is what this really is. Um, if we looked at you know, Wednesday night, there were grappling situations, grabbing you know, here. And just how can you that he can, you know, starts to sort of got there. You know, and if he can act as my thing. Yeah. So a different grabbing position. It really doesn't take terribly much. Um, this katan can too can also be used as actually <laughs> as shots, because it has this nice angle to get to. It can actually be percussive. <laughs> That's like my phone. Alright, uh he throws that. Alright, but we're not talking about the percussive aspects of the content, they were kind of a, a 
cutting aspects of Katarn Ken and what it can do. So any thoughts, questions on that? Okay, so we're gonna look at Musan for the next 40 or so minutes. We could spend um, Musan's first and fog um, in general for you. Kind of on the top five, yeah, and all of the top three kata in, in this art in my mind. Um, because there's so much to it. So much to it. But it looks ridiculously simple. Alright. So, first thing, it's actually, it's one of the only cards that's actually going to start in Ishimonji. Wait. Oh. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, I'm going to start almost maybe even a Sagan. I'm gonna, he's actually going to launch a right uh, low gut, gut punch to me. So I'm here. Fook. Right. So that's how it's going to sound. Like, ah, boom. I'm, I'm, I'm baiting him. All right, that's the first time. I'm kind of like, oh, no, man. Oh, no, 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 please. Because I want him to do that. All right, so that's the, that's the start. So as that comes in, I'm going to switch over into a Miggy Bobi no Kamai with a Fudo Ken to his throat. Here. Okay. From here, we're going into Ken. There's a lot that happens in between those two things. We're not going to be able to talk about them all today. So let's talk about the first part, the capture of the punch. This is a big one. If I'm up here, my, my view of Adam is my hand is roughly kind of on his center line. I know where he's going to hit. I have a very good idea, because my hands are up here, that this is the target. All right? And so it's either going to be a kick or a punch. One or the other is going to go here. Now that that punch comes, I can just drop this hand right here to get this. All right? The fall, I'm basically going to have this hand come down to the spot that he's hitting. And since it's higher, it will follow the path of his arm. And I'll be able to lock it. So I don't have to try to grab it out of the air. Does that make sense? So if we're both on this line, my hand is up here. It, when I rotate, it drops on that line. Right to where my side was. And I can find it. Alright? At the same time, I'm going to put a pen to the throat, which is weird. And the fact that I kind of want to keep him in place. If I really wanted him out of here, whoo, this would be a shatan pen to the throat, and I'd break his trachea. Right? Or shatan, a shatan or shatan pen. Or shako pen. All right? I would really put this in there. So this actually is kind of a weird thing to put in. Because this really doesn't fit well. So I'm actually trying to extend him out. He's a kind of pale guy like this. And this comes in. I don't want to extend it. Yeah. Fight's not over. All right? Fight's not over. But I'm, I'm starting here and kind of getting him in this position. Yeah. So it looks like as he's throwing the punch, you are guiding his wrist toward your hip yeah. as you're rotating. Yes. Okay. So think of this going to be from an Ichimonji almost to a midi open open mind. Too much about the distance and the angling right now. Just see if we can actually get offline, drop that, and, up, and get to get. Because right from here, there's a gazillion and a half wonderful things to do. All right, we'll talk about the rest of the epic under in a second. Okay, so it's fine. Just find someone roughly in your height for right now that you haven't worked with. On that one, just want to make sure you guys get the, the hand drop and release, which is good. So now, let's look at the angling into this next part. So. As Chris comes in, if I drop like this, um, I can do it from here, don't get me wrong, but man, that throat punch isn't really gonna be as good. I'm not really kinda into it. Um, I really haven't blocked his shoulder off at all. That's gonna keep coming. Right, that, that's not really gonna do much for him. So I'm actually, as this, as this happens, I'm actually gonna shift more directly into him here. Now this is more of a dramatic effect for Chris. All right, I actually now have a little bit more turn in this too, which is kind of, you know, popping up that side a little bit. It's not as simple as just stepping out of this. All right? So, chances are what Chris is probably going to do is he's probably going to throw his hips back behind him. Just kind of, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> All right? 
We're not going to worry about that aspect. I don't want you to worry about the counter right now. We're just going to go through the technique. But what I want you to worry about this part right here is as it's coming, keep that line yeah. so it's more centered. Okay? Good. Yeah. Right, we proceed with the rest from here. If you want to, you put a little torque on there, that's fine. And the reason I'm going to put that in there is because I want it to burn away. Okay? So, advanced belts. Everyone, everyone first here. Boom. Advanced belts. Start really beefing it on. Okay. All right. Go ahead. You ended up with that. That's what I wanted to do. That was my plan. I'm going that. into basically like <clears throat> one tenth of what this topic can show us. Because this is really an emotional topic about setting up, staging, fighting by the seat of your pants. Um, there's a lot of nifty hand work in here. There's a lot of setting people up so they have only options to do certain things. There's on the back, I mean, the first thing is, it's like, this is not, this isn't a great place. This isn't wonderful. This is a stupid shot. Yeah. I really don't have this, you know? I really, I mean, if I really wanted to, this to be good, this would be a time 10, right, to explode and get here. I mean, if this is what I wanted to do, but it's like, it's still nice, it's like, well, that's a big martial art, you get out of the way and break that throat. Yes, that's my martial art. No, there's not really much to do that. This isn't the greatest position in the world. And this is one of the reasons this is here like this is because it's meant, this is meant to show what's going to happen three steps later. Okay? So, we've all done well in kind of getting off to here. All right? So now, what's going to happen is with this twist, it's going to happen. I'm actually going to pick Adam's hand up as I hit him in the ribs and go under. Here. All right? Um, you think we should go into step back? Nah, that's a little bit. You want to do the step back? Okay. The step back actually makes the hand better. After they hit him here, the next thing Adam probably wants to do is again step the sit back. And when he steps the sit back, because again, this isn't the greatest lock in the world, watch what happens to his lock as he just steps back. It starts to turn. So just naturally. Let's have a really good grip. But actually, maybe I want him to, because I actually want this grip. Right? And the more I tweak it this way, the more it snaps back. Right? So he wants out of that. So he fights against it. Boom, great. Now I'm on the back side of his hand already. You see that switch and how that automatically happened? But shit, he's actually starting to regain position. I don't like that. So as so as he goes back, I'm now going to pick this up and go right in at him. And note that I have this arm right across my back. Because I'm going to turn my back to him in a second. This is a bad idea. All right? This isn't even the greatest position. All right, cool. We'll talk about that one in a second. Turn out. Okay. All right. So now what we're looking at is we've got you to here. He stepped back. That hand's kind of turned a little bit. I'm going to pull it up, turn it this way. Much as I can get it. Much as I can get it. As I do that, I'm going to step forward with this leg. I'm going to hit him with the... Here. All right, so I got a little bit of protection. My head's got a little protection because I was behind his arm. This part's still kind of screwed, but I'm right here. All right, and if you want to, just unfurl for right now. We'll work on that heartbeat. Okay, see it so far? Understand what we're going for? That's the extra step we're adding in. That this has happened. Boom. He stepped back and let go. That hand's going to flip. That hand flipped. I'm going to pick it up and keep turning it this way now as I hit him. Step forward, my left foot hit him. Extend him out a little bit. That elbow doesn't feel wonderful, does that? No. But also, I have that contact all the way from my elbow to basically the back of my head. I have his arm. I know where his arm is. I don't want to be here. I don't know where his arm is. I want to be here. I know where his complete arm is. So now, since I know where his arm is, I know I can tell if he does something. Yeah, I can tell if he moves. I actually have a better hold of you too, don't I? Right? So back contact is very important. Because if I'm turning my back to this man, this is not a great idea. But if I'm gonna turn my back to him, guess what, I'm gonna have every piece of information, and I have a lot of information from here all the way up to here, every piece of him is touching me right now. And I want to know this. Okay? Go there. Punch. 
not funky photos, funky neighborhood crowd, Chris, Sydney, and the visual. Here, you step back, and the beast is going to get, again, I don't care if he steps back or this way, this way, I really don't care. Next foot, next step is basically just isolate the side of my body. Yoko root. I'm stepping with the Yoko Ruki this way. All right. Now just pay attention so I can then eventually step around into this with less steps. I'm not stepping a one, two, three, I it's, it's, no, it's up. Up. Here. Okay. Now I'm also pulling him as I do that. That's how the shot can get in. See, a lot of people think that this, okay, well, I have to make the shot so I can step forward with this side to make the shot. Because he's, he's not there. It's like, no, no, you pull him into this. And now I have, now I get the contact all the way to and from. Right? I'm not doing this. I have no contact. This is very hard. I'm stepping out, setting myself up for this turn, but pulling him into the shop. Do we see that? All right, so there's, there's a lot going on. There's multiple things going on. And this aspect of pulling somebody into a shot, as I was mentioning these guys, we actually already had it. Because this could have been done here. On the very first one I could have done. I didn't. But imagine that. Imagine if we had shipped this to a Shittai pen and I pulled him into that. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, man. I could have used aspect from the second part of the turn and the first part of the turn and changed the whole process. Like that? This is what's cool. There's a lot of levels to this thing. Forget that if you want to. We hit him. We step back. That hand's turned. Not a better spot. This side only. Yoko rookie step, pulling him out. So he's rotating it this way, we're pulling him this way, and I'm hitting him here. And getting him to connect all the way from here to here. Okay? Go. Let's look at the exit out of this. Uh, look, I'm going to. So, we'll just have it. He stepped out of it. Now, what looks like this? I'm not going to talk. I'm, there's something going on with his hand. I'm not going to talk about that yet. All right. What I'm going to talk about is the way that I exit from here. What it looks like is I'm doing a big circle and coming around and hitting his arm, and he collapses. Right. Or worst case scenario, maybe I get to here. I'm like, jeez, what is out here? How come he keeps turning this way? The rules of any old axis, so he makes it gets worse, so I can grab him. So the, it looks like you're going out and around and down. Damn it, why is he there? It's the way that I exit. I don't go that way. I'm going this way. Out the line of his arm. Over the Joko Ruki. This way. Here. Are you stretching that arm out? Oh, still. So I'm stretching out, turning it the whole way through. But now, since I'm not giving him a circle, because I'm going on the line of his arm, there's no centrifugal force, and he can rotate against. Then I'm going to do a back Joko Ruki from here. On here. So instead of going like this, I'm going. Poof, poof. I'm doing a repositioning rather than a circle. And this is huge in this art. We see all the time, like, okay, start, drop, 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 like, um, rotate, you know, okay, rotate this. Yeah, he came with me. He came with me. I rotate. I did this big, long circle, and he came right with me, and nothing happened. Okay, so we know my end position is over there, right? That's a repositioning. 
Do we understand the difference? Rotating to a spot and repositioning to a spot are two different things. This is me, I'm gonna do an Ishimonji going that way. This is me rotating into an Ishimonji. Do you see it? This is me repositioning to an Ishimonji. Do you see the difference? Your body weight is, is traveling. My body weight's traveling totally in a different direction, but my feet are where they are. So the thing is, is the feet work, the footwork is a lot different. If I'm rotating into this right, it's just going to go wide. That position. And my whole rotation is left in that, which he feels. That's what I do when I come out of that. When I come out of this situation here, I'm doing a wide turn. He feels that he rotates. All right? He's the counteraction to my rotation. All right? But if I'm here, and I just step behind, I don't have the rotation. I'm just me positioning. I can teach a class for a weekend just on this aspect, because it changes everything. And, and my guarantee you is 35% of your screw-ups in this art are because you rotate into something when all you need to do is reposition. See here. Multidiaku. Rotating into the multi eh, Kinda. Kinda. Um, repositioning to the multi -gyaku. Same end position. Same end, exact end position. I was here on well. First one I rotated into. He felt it. He adjusted the whole way through. Second one I stepped right by my foot, went right to it. <laughs> there was nothing for him, there was no energy for him to adjust with. Do we see that? This is very much on display in this axis of moves on. So he comes in. Boom. He steps back. Don't rotate. Don't go. Step right by his foot. Better yet, step right by this foot. Straight through. Still pulling this way. We'll have to move on there. You're moving the four already at this point in time. Alright? From here. Now I can turn my knee forward. Okay. It's more out, poop back. Than it is. Okay? Very fine detail, but very, very powerful detail. We see it. All right, show me. <coughs> okay, Mata. So again, a gazillion and a half aspects. Scott comes from. So now we have this really neat aspect, and so I'm going to talk in the last you know, couple minutes of class. Like, you know, we said this is a like hard technique. I mean, this is there's a lot of a lot of stuff in here, but this is actually a very brutal ending of a technique. But I also said this is a very casual art. Because I mean, everybody comes in first. I mean, that's Kusan, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, like, oh, it's about as simple as can be, right? You pick a damn up and you break it. Uh, no, there's a gazillion and a half other things in there. That's what we're talking about. We just all these learning lessons. This is really a training hack, just like a cop, right? One of those that ones where a cop is here and then back down, right? But man, that was a lot in there. That was a lot about having the setback. You know, the fact that he as he steps out, I kick him at the same time, and I bring him down here, and I go to here. This is a lot. So these kata, are, I think, are really great because if you know them just on the surface, you can kick the shit out of people. <laughs> you know? I mean, you can do some major damage. But then if you start to know them a little more internally, they really are showing you a lot of training tools. A lot of training tools. And we've already talked about the fact that using this to drop, you know, the fact he steps out, that can actually rearrange this, this extension. This is massive step out to not make him turn. That's huge. Okay? So now we're here. I've gotten to this point in time where, okay, I'm starting to turn my back to him. This is not a great idea. All right? You specifically don't want to turn my back to this. And we're learning about something. You know, how can we actually understand when we're turning our back to somebody that we can still know where they are and control me? So now I'm going to actually disconnect from this for a second as I step on it. I don't know what he's doing. All I have is this. He can have a knife 
and he's grabbed. I have no clue. I am in a horrid position at this moment. And I don't want to have to rely on that. Well, I'm just going to do it so fast. Well, I can do it so fast, he can still have a knife. <laughs> Not a great idea. So how do I protect myself in this position? Here. Okay? So what I have is an Urgyaku that kind of has a little Hongyaku twist. So Chris, if Chris came after me right now, it would be very hard on this here. And what it also does is it prevents his elbow from unlocking. So if I'm here, just like this, I'm just doing your ura this away, Chris can unlock his elbow, hit me in the back of the head, and just warn her. He's gonna I, I don't want I don't want that. <laughs> that's 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 uncool. So I'm gonna have this ura, but I'm also gonna have this. So now, unlocking it's not there, is it? No. So with this grip, I actually have control all the way down to the shoulder. So that 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 would be a very that would be a lot harder knife stab, right? Yeah. It would be a lot harder grab just to come and grab me, grab me and pull me back. What I'm doing here from this position, this hand has now come up. So I'm trying to swing right. I am twisting this as fully as I can on this axis. At the same time. I'm pushing it in this way. So I'm trying to make this part touch this part. Now, I'm not pushing it forward. I'm jamming it. Twisting and jamming. All right? As I come out, everything from his hand to his shoulder is locked up on that side. It's harder to progress to me now. Try to conclude him. That's what I need. That's what I need. If I'm gonna put my back to him, I gotta make sure he can't come get me. Yeah. But he's still, if he's got a knife in his left hand, just flick it under him as you put me. I, I, I mean, yes, I, I, I guess so. You know, I mean, I mean, yes, he could. I mean, I can't provide all things. But what I'm not sure is like, he's probably, at this point in time, his mind isn't thinking about flicking knives at me. His mind's probably thinking about stabbing me if he's pissed off. Mm. You go into it, it hurts him. Yeah. Right? So, Think of it this way. He probably doesn't realize this is doing this to him. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to try to stab me. Then he may try to throw it. I'm not going to stay here. No. <laughs> All right. This is just so I can get around to break his arm. All right. This is, saves me in this position. All right. For that split second, it holds him at bay. It's kind of painful. Doesn't make you want to step in, locks the joint the whole way up, and gives you at least a little bit of control while I'm like this. Mm. So it's not the best spot in the world. All right? I got to control a man that's behind me, and all I have is a spot. You have your belts. What I want you guys to concentrate on, and this is upper belts only, is as you're in here, I want you to, I want you to understand and feel what this does to his shoulder and how this end locks up his shoulder and how this sets his shoulder into place. Because Chris, there's a difference between this and this, isn't there? Okay. All right, so we're tweaking that hand. We all see what the tweak is. This is an being rotated as fully as it can this way, and then it's being jammed this way. As you do that outstretch, as you come out from there. All right, once you did that, we'll talk about how you deliver the rest of the strike from there. All right. So a couple things on this. I, I guarantee you you've been to a funnel so far. Right? But well, looks like this. <laughs> All right. So a couple things on this. Actually, a lot of things on this. I have it next to my face for a couple of reasons. All right. One, I can feel it better. Okay. I can kind of tuck in here a little bit more. The shoulder, this cheek, and kind of have something. I know here trying to I don't really have much at all. Right? First thing I'm rotating as much as I can this way. Alright? Without having it go over my shoulder. Alright, look, look, look at this. Alright. Now, from here, on this wrist, I'm not having the hand go forward. Okay? I want you everyone come here for a second. I want you to watch this. This is important. 
this is actually, you'll see this in a lot of different things. This is actually in a lot of shows. Will's wrist is here. I'm not having his hand go forward to get that angle. That's not what's happening. These are staying here. His wrist is going back. And another reason why I have my face here, because if I don't, his elbow comes right to me. That's the counteraction to this. So I'll make sure this is here. Now that's a different story, isn't it? Well, Right. Okay, so again, constantly turning this way, constantly jamming this back, making sure that elbow can comes through. Now, yeah. okay. So this is a lot. This this back aspect. There's a lot of different stuff going on. Just so I'm side of my face, not taking his hand and going out like this, leaving this here and putting his wrist back. Now I got something. Now I can adjust his shoulder in the socket. Right? Out, in, out, in. Okay? So it's like you have a cheeseburger, you gotta eat the cheeseburger and then your attention just gets ever so slightly just keep taking the way. Um Yeah, but the cheeseburger stays in place, and my seat goes back. I'm not, I'm not looking like this. I'm not. Yeah. And this is again another repositioning. This is me going from here to here, not rotating his hand forward, repositioning the mm -hmm. jam. Just done in a small situation. You see it? Yes. Okay. Come on, let's go. Then we'll break your arm. <laughs> No, so much just to twirl under somebody's arm, huh? This aspect is incredibly important in the training field. But it's not in the terms of what we're doing, you know, in the radio street. Boom. Get in here, stuff like that, you know. I'm not, I'm not staying in that position for long. All right, so I'm not going to concentrate in terms of, do I need to do it? No, you're not going to be here. I've already dashed you here. I just dashed you up here. And I'm coming back in here. You know, I'm not really giving you a lot of opportunity to me. I'm just making making sure it's that wrist thing. But this wrist thing is kind of cool in a lot of other aspects too. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because um, we usually look at, you know, home diakus, we usually look at her diakus, but this is kind of a little bastard cousin of both. Not a tip, just all right, you just classic Ur. No, it's just Ur with this ah. jam. Oh, that extra twist of that, that extra angle change in that Ur is brutal. Brutal. That's not a home. That's an Ur. <laughs> and, your, and your shoulder is toast. Good to know. Cool shit. Huh. <laughs> Let's look how to really maximize the destruction of this line. Boom, got it over here. We know, okay, here's over here. Now, from here, what's interesting is, as this foot's here and I shift out, this is actually a dramatic pull, not a rotation, rotation kick. I really want them, again, we've already said we get this alignment. Once I'm here, I'm gonna shift my weight, I'm gonna dump this hand down and pull it to this hip. Oh, shit. My hand's right here. Now I don't have to find this, because I know where it's going to be. It's going to be right in front of my hips. Now, don't get me wrong. You come out here, and you get in here, and you come out and hit. That's totally cool. But this aspect, just so you saw, of pulling them into a hit, Because I'm pulling them into this hip, I can drop straight down with this side. I don't have to find it. Here, this side, oh, it's gonna come down like a hammer from the gods. Whoa, and that's, oh. And the elbow's gonna be right underneath it by the time I get there. Okay? So, again, this is more for the advanced people. Think of the aspect of like, okay, 
Instead of, if I get to some place like this, I don't have to actually adjust my body to hit them. I could pull them to the place I want them to be, and then hit them. Pulling them in this, just like I'm pulling you into a hit here. It looks like I'm going in and hitting you, but I'm pulling you into this, right? I'm pulling you into this with my body, not with my arm. You see that? All right, last couple minutes, just try that. As you come out of that turn, just dump it and pull it in here. Don't do the strike, it will be very hard. So you got to here, you got to here, you got to here, you got to here. All right? Ease up on this wrist. All right? Shift your weight, face him, pull this hand to this hip. And keep the twist going. Twist up. All right, not All right, go. So there's so many things. There's so many things. There's violations of rules in the hand. I was talking about with these guys. Um, there's that aspect of being that hit and having that weight fully transferred down. And then there's Henka. And then there's the old man version. <laughs> you know, looking at this. And so, Shinden Fu Yu, what I find is that the katsus are very, a uh, lot of teaching in them. Every little bit. Kyokyo Yu to a point, too. Um, Koto Yu is more like, you know, <laughs> you know Kage Yu you'll find is a lot more like balance, kind of balance taking. Even some of the Takakuri ones were, were kind of look at everything and taking balance and you almost like a keto, taking balance and using them against them. Where this is like, no, this is like, you can you can learn the kata and be actually pretty good at that position and kick some ass. Or you could like say, wait, what is this little piece right here? Show me. Oh my God, I can take that and put that to every one of my movements. Oh my God, there's another one there. Oh my God, there's another one. Send it for you once so I've seen how a lot of that. Have a lot of that. So, um, that's why I like them because they do, I think you can see like, this isn't a hard movement, right? Boom, right? But man, like you got into it, it's like, oh, that's kind of, this, oh, wow, okay. I mean, you see there's a lot to it. So that's why I kind of wanted to um, show you guys this one because again, it's another big one that's out there. Um, and just again, not really to say learn it, you know, have it down, but have it say appreciation. Again, this is about the lineages and the history and foundational stuff. and this class was about, okay, really seeing what Ihen no Kamai can do, you know, that weight shift can do. Uh, just like Kicho is a lot about weight shift, Ihen no Kamai is a lot about weight shift and weight management. But also saying, okay, what shouldn't you like? And what are the classes like? And why would you ever do that? Oh, because I'm trying to do this, or this is the maximum, and I'm trying to get in here. It's a lot of mind games. Um, so just wanted you to experience that in this class. Questions, thoughts? Uh, it's, uh, this class kind of enhances your understanding of the art to some extent, because you see, not only is it not all about maximum destruction, although that's the fun part, um, but also this was mostly anti-instinct. You mm -hmm. tell the stuff that doesn't make sense, but it still works. Mm -hmm. So you, you see the marvelous wide range of this art. No, oh, yeah, no, no, you're right, thank you for that. And uh, I mean, just think if this whole thing was done with a, um, different attitudes, we talked about element session. What if this is done with a really fiery kind of attitude? What if this is like, oh my God, kind of windy or scared, yeah, just kind of going in there, you know, water, oh, kind of feeling that flow. Or just like, get pissed off versus, oh my God, what the hell's going on? And you're kind of befuddling your way through it. It's to take on a whole different life, um, but all still really kind of cool parts. Yeah. one thing was, uh, some of these cops that are really not every fight, like you said, you don't, for whatever reason, you don't want to show them every fight. You right. Could, yeah. But some of them might be your drunken uncle or cousin. Right. Or whatever, you know, like, it, it doesn't always have to be duke it out with more right. hair or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And this cop was a pretty good example. Yeah. yeah so doing somebody. Yeah. Break their arm, maybe, but that's mm -hmm. not the end. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. This didn't have to end in a broken arm. This could right. easily end in a take, it's just a drag out take down. You know, this could be easily ended with, you know, you went, you just, you could have hit them so hard that they shoved them. You could have tripped them right off that initial thing. You know, I mean, you could have actually stopped them just going to take them down by the wrist. There was, there was multiple ways to end that kata in, in violent ways or in very placid ways. I mean, right from the get go on that, just that arm grab, you could have just turned right up and just dumped the guy right to the ground. You know, been simple, you know, and just gone away. So, what are you doing? You're an idiot. Yeah. I think it separates us from not, not every art, I don't want to say that, but a lot of art. 
Yeah, no, absolutely, I agree. I, I totally agree. Anything else? Thanks, man. Thanks. All right, you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No. Hey. <laughs> Oh my God, some dog stood next to me the other day. 